show on the road here. Um, I'm Hunter Allen, and uh, thanks for coming. I hope you guys are looking forward to a uh, great ride tomorrow. It's going to be a lot of fun. It's looking like the weather's going to be pretty decent, too, so hopefully we'll not have too much uh, that wet stuff since uh, I feel like I'm living in Seattle here this past month. <laughs> it's unbelievable how much rain we've had here in the local area. I'm sure you guys are too. Uh, and how many people who have, have done Thunder Ridge before? Okay, all right. So guess we're preparing folks. That's great. That's great. How many folks are um, in uh, who are doing the 100 miler today? Okay, excellent. How about the uh, the 27 mile? Okay. All right, cool. So in the 45, 75. Okay. All right. So we got a good variety, of everybody. Excellent. That's great. All right. Well, we're going to talk a, a little bit about each of these things. Uh, and kind of what these are, uh, we'll talk a little bit in terms of, of uh, pacing, we're going to talk a little bit nutrition, we're going to talk about some of the, the different obstacles that you're going to encounter out there for those who have never done it before. Uh, just a little bit about me, I started Peaks Coaching Group back in 1997. I was a pro cyclist in the, the early uh, 90s through middle 90s, retired from cycling and decided um, what am I going to do with my life now? One of those moments, oh no. Um, once I retired from pro cycling, had started coaching some athletes uh, and had a, a client of mine come to me and say, hey, you know, um, I should, you know, you should, you should have a website. This was 97. I was like, what's a website? <laughs> right? And he was like, oh, it's like a business card online. It'll, it probably won't do much, you know, but it'll be cool to have a website. So he built me a website in exchange for coaching, and uh, next thing you know, I'm like, turn it off, turn it off. <laughs> you know, I had 40 clients instantly. So it was really fun. We had a great time with that. Uh, along came uh, another client of mine. He bought one of these power meter things, measuring your, your power on your bicycle. And um, really what, what uh, and then he, he and I worked together for a year or so building a piece of software. So we built uh, this software called Cycling Peak Software. We merged that company with a company called Training Bible, which is this company that Joe Friel started. And so that became Training Peaks. So uh, then from there, uh, Dr. Coggin and I wrote uh, Training and Racing with Power Meter. This is our second edition. Uh, and this, um, this came out in 2009. So it's been out for a little while, working on maybe third edition. But I think we're going to do advances in Training and Racing with Power Meter next. And then maybe go to third edition. Uh, this is a great gift to give yourself for your event for tomorrow. We have these on sale out front, $20. Normally they're $25, so that's a great one. Dr. Stephen Chung and I wrote this book, uh, Cutting Edge Cycling. This one is one that has lots of different topics, uh, nutrition, recovery, bike fit, all kinds of really good things in here. This one's $15. That's out there as well. So. Been doing, uh, I've been coaching now since, oh gosh, 97, traveling around the world, uh, talking to athletes, coaching athletes, teaching coaches how to use this power meter information, how to train more efficiently, more effectively. So that's a little background on me. The, uh, let's talk about the course. Let's talk about this profile and what this means and what you guys are going to going to tackle. Obviously, the big the big thing here is, is Thunder Ridge itself. So it's a 12 and a half mile climb. Once you enter the parkway, it's pretty much you're on the climb. So you've got a little bit of flat there for the first mile or two, and then it starts to gradually go up. The, the first pitch, when you start to really climb, that's actually the steepest pitch of the whole climb. It's 6% right there. Okay? The beautiful thing about the Bridge Parkway is they engineered it so that uh, there's nothing steeper than 6% on the entire parkway. So it's, that's the steepest place. The rest of it's three to four percent. It really isn't that steep. It's just long. It's going to take you a while to get up that climb. So it's important to kind of keep that in mind as you start at the bottom because pacing is really critical in the last three miles because up to the top you're going to be more exposed. Okay. So we'll talk a little bit about these key points here. So it begins at mile 26. The uh, again, it's mostly seated. Okay, so most of the time, because this, the, the gradient is relatively low, you're going to probably spend most of the time seated. However, that means you're spending all this time seated, you need to get up out of the saddle, stretch your back, make sure that you're using some different muscles so that you're not just, okay, I'm just using my hamstrings and gluteals all the time. 
let's get up out of the saddle. I like just kind of doing it every five minutes, I'm out of the saddle, standing, and just stand and rest. It's, it's gentle enough you can actually kind of stand and rest at times. So, so keep that in mind. The other thing that, that uh, the 100 miler has is on the way home, lots and lots of rollers. Okay? There is no flat road <laughs> in this area. <laughs> this is not a flat area. So you're either going up or down pretty much the whole way home. There's 3,500 feet of climbing on that way home. Okay, So you'll have just done this climb, which starts at 800 feet, goes to 4,000, and then the way home you've got about the same amount, even really more you have. Okay? There's seven rest stops along the way. So um, the roads that you're riding on are relatively small. Okay, so that's one of the beautiful things. I mean, this is my backyard. I, li I literally live only two miles away from the base of Thunder Ridge. So um, all these roads I ride on all every week. And so they're, they're great roads. Low traffic, you're not going to see a lot of traffic. A lot of other cyclists are going to be there. But that also means that they're small. Okay, so just keep your eyes open. Make sure you don't come around a turn. There might be somebody coming around a turn. It's hard to see cars and stuff. Keep your eyes open. Be attentive at all times. Okay, strategies. So let's talk about some strategy for you that help you for tomorrow. So I like to want, you know, kind of save energy for the final part of the climb. Okay? So if you start too hard, if you start too quickly, then it, you have a tendency to, to kind of blow out a little bit of that energy you might need at the end. Okay? So uh, when you turn onto the parkway tomorrow, just remember, okay, pace yourself, take it easy, don't start too hard, don't take off and try and kill it the first five miles because that's you still got a long climb to go. It, since it is a long climb, you know, you need to eat and drink a little bit in the first 26 miles. Okay, you're gonna be on small roads, you know, you gotta be attentive, okay, how many eat and drink? So make sure you've got things that are gonna be and then two, on the climb itself, right? I mean, you're gonna be on this climb, this could be an hour plus climb, hour and a half climb, or longer, two hour climb maybe. You have to eat and drink on the climb. A lot of people will forget, oh, they're just, you know, you get engrossed, you got the blinders on on the climb, and you forget to eat and drink. So it's super important to eat and drink when you're climbing. Okay, so after you get to the top, then you've got some rollers, so you come down, on the parkway, you're kind of you got big sweeping turns. So on the parkway itself, the turns aren't bad. Okay, they're real gentle. They're big and sweepers. They're easy to negotiate. You can pre pretty much have to pedal a lot of the way kind of down on the parkway. There is another little two mile gentle climb up to the peaks of Otter Lodge. So you've got that little gentle two mile climb there. So just keep that in mind. Then you're going to get to the peaks of Otter Lodge and, and kind of go past it. So you on the left, you see the lake on the left and then you'll come down the Peak Spider Descent. Okay, so that's Route 43. That is a big, steep, super fast descent. Okay, be really careful there. Okay, be super duper careful. There is um, one left-hander. There's a very difficult left-hander at the bottom of what we call the wall. Uh, and it's, you can be going 50 miles an hour right there, and then if you try and go around that left-hander at the bottom at 50 miles an hour, you will not make it. Okay, so um, be super careful. It's in the top third of the downhill. It's a hard left-hander. Just be really, really careful on that one. Um, this is where we do our camp every year. We have a camp in the spring and a camp in the fall. And we do the Thunder Ridge, basically the Thunder Ridge route. And um, so every year, no matter what, I even have signs now before this turn at my camp. Slow down. I have somebody crash in that turn. Okay, so you guys just be super careful on this end. No helicopter rides, please. All right. Now, after the downhill there, you've got lots of little hills. Okay, so you're going to be cruising on these beautiful little roads, uh, and just keep in mind to be smooth up and down. Okay, it's much better to meter your effort on the up hills instead of trying to charge up these hills. Okay. Um, so just keep that in mind. Be smooth. Okay, I'm going to be smooth up the hill. I'm going to go over the hill, and I'm going to come down the other side. And you're going to keep that momentum, right? So keep the momentum going down. 
and, and let yourself roll back up that hill. I see too many people sometimes, they'll go right into the small chain ring way too early. You do the big ring when you come out on that hill and you're coming up the other side and keep that momentum going. You can get halfway up, if not all the way up some of these little hills on the other side. Right, so momentum is really, really key. At the very end, you're going to get on some faster, bigger rows. So that'll be a fun way to get home. Uh, you kind of done all of the little hills there. Once you get the last 15 miles or so, they're more gentle, gradual hills at that point with bigger, wider rows. So it shouldn't be too hard. Any questions on the course itself? So that, that left hand. I don't think there is a sign. I do not think there is a sign. Okay, so keep just just be aware. Okay, so when you come down over the Peaks of Otter, you're going to come down and uh, you've got a, a big kind of sweeping right hand turn. You've got a left hand, then you've got a right hand, and then it's you you literally it's like whoa, kind of go down the wall. You know why you see it's above the wall, and then the turn just goes turns almost like 90 degrees. And you'll know that's where I need to go slow. Near where the power line goes through, yes. Yeah. Yeah. What mile marker do you think that? Spray face caution or slow or something like that right before that one on the bay. Um, that's a good question. Um, let's see. It should be. So here is uh, mile 50 when you turn left. So it's going to be 45. So there's the the lake here, the Peaks of Otter. It's essentially right here, so it's probably at mile 48, I would say, maybe, four, yeah, probably 48, somewhere in that range. But again, you're going to come down the Peaks of Otter, it's a, it's a little left, a little right-hander, and then left, and then boom, and then it just drops off, hard left hand. So just be careful there. The rest of it's pretty straightforward. Let's see, big, big. Okay, so that's that's the, the, the main gist of it. All of this stuff in here, this is all the little little itty bitty hills here. So um, it is a lot of ups and downs. Meter your efforts on those things. Don't charge up the hills here. Again, you're going to be tired anyway, but at the same time, you know, just keep in mind, I want to be smooth and steady over top of these things. Take advantage of these rest stops here. Those will be real critical. Uh, doesn't look like the weather's going to be really hot or anything tomorrow, so that's great. I mean, this weekend has been 90 degrees before in the past, uh, first hot day of the year, and people are wilting at the end. But you know, it is going to be uh, you know just keep hydrated towards the end. This one right here, this is the top of Thunder Ridge, so that's a great one to make sure that before you come here, this is a long way, right? So. You need food, water at the top of Thunder Ridge before you make it to here. All right, so um, it's really critical to, to make sure you, you make that happen on that one. So definitely two water bottles there. How about that last part when you're doing the last 30 and you're hitting those little rises and stuff? If you're using a power meter, what, 120% of the TP? Uh, I think you probably, maybe, um, so if you're using a power meter, pacing yourself on those, that's probably, I would say more like a hundred maybe on that, because you're going to be probably tired, you know, so a hundred percent of your FTP on those little hills, and maybe even, uh, you know, some of them, some of the longer ones are three minutes or so, that's probably like 80 or 90 percent, so you be real careful. All right, cool. That's the big rod. Okay, so strategy, keep that in mind. Eat, drink. So you have plenty of energy for the last 20 miles. Don't start too hard. Okay, don't start too hard. Don't start too hard on that climb. <laughs> don't start too hard on the climb. All right. Yeah. Don't start too hard. Now. The 75 miler, right? It's not much different. It's you still got the big climb, all right, and you've got a little less on the way home. Okay, so less climbing on the way home. You're still 2,500 feet of climbing on the way home. All right, so you still got to remember to stand up on the big climb. You still got this 12 and a half mile climb. It's the same strategy for the 100 miler folks. Okay, same strategy. Five rest stops versus seven. 
So you've got five there to take advantage of. Same small little bitty itty rows, all those things. Okay. Use the momentum on the downhills to get you up the next hill. You're going to be on the same kind of fast little road here towards the end that'll bring you back out. Once you kind of get to here, you make this right turn here. This is pretty pretty quick all the way through in here. This last um, five to eight miles is pretty fast, so that's uh, that should be pretty fun for you. Okay. The 45 miler. How many people we have for 45 miler? All right, great, awesome, cool. I'm doing the 45 miler tomorrow, so I will see you out there. The um, this is uh, again. These are these are some really great roads. The, these are um, you know just small little hills. This is the loop that I call the the loop of 50 hills. So uh, it's plenty of hills you're going to do on this section. Uh, there's a great little rest stop here out here, Sedalia, uh, and then there's another one here and as you turn back on the little hills again. This long section right here, this is a, a, a real fast little long one mile or two mile section here that is uh, that's real fast. This is a little bigger road right here. So from 24 to 26, this road right here, this is Route 122, it's a little bigger road. Okay, so it won't be a lot of traffic on Sunday. Okay, so it's not going to be a lot of traffic. There might be a few tractor trailers on that road just because um, there's a paper mill there in Big Island, and so they go up and down this road right here. So just when you get on the bigger road here, after you, we, we've kind of done this little Sedalia loop out here, just keep that in mind, stay to the right, be, be safe, and then we'll turn left here on this little, little short road here. That should be pretty fun. So that's a great little loop to do. It's a beautiful rock. Still 3,000 feet of climbing, lots of climbing, lots of hills, all right? Standing on the steep sections, seated maybe on flatter sections, keep your eyes up, small roads. Same thing for everybody, small roads. That's the beautiful part about riding here in the back roads of Virginia. Eat consistently, drink, same thing, same strategies here. Boom, everybody kind of had that same strategy. Pacing Thunder Ridge, don't start too hard. <laughs> That's the key, all right? It's easy to pace yourself because it is a steep, steady gradient, gradient, all right? If we have a gradient where uh, it's up, down, up, down, up, down, that's much more difficult to pace yourself. This is much easier to pace yourself in. Uh, this is a way to really keep that in mind. You can get in a nice, solid rhythm. You can stay you know, focused in that rhythm. If you're looking at your heart rate monitor or your power meter or just your speedometer, you want to make sure, okay, I'm being consistent, I'm staying steady, I'm not jumping, I'm not bursting, you know, kind of with efforts and hard efforts. That's something that uh, will save energy later. Um, I'm, again, every five minutes, stand up and just stretch, let the back, you know, kind of be a little bit, open a little bit more, kind of get that back going and, uh, you know, use your quadriceps. One way to do this is if you get on your handlebars and kind of shift your weight forward, you kind of fix your shoulders a little bit and you can almost rest on the bike, okay? So you can stand up and you just let the weight fall down on the pedals. Uh, if you watch some of the riders and some of these big bike races, you see them climbing and they're just very still standing up and they're literally resting while they're standing. So you don't have to spend a lot of energy when you're standing on the, on the, uh, on the, on the bicycle. So try that out, see if you can that one. Now, afterwards, post-ride recovery. All right. So, um, if you have a recovery shake, if you if you brought one of those things, I would definitely use that. You want um, at least two and a half carbs to one gram to one part protein, uh, and you could go as much as four carbs to one protein. That gives you a lot of. Uh, essentially, it stimulates the, the body to produce more insulin, which then opens the doorways to get that light, get that uh, carbohydrate and protein into your muscle cells so you recover faster. You want to do that pretty quickly, okay? So don't, when you come back, don't hang around for 45 minutes or an hour and then have a recovery shake or have some food. Get back, get, you know, get uh, off your bike, you know, get cleaned up a little bit, boom, make sure you've got your recovery shake or, you know, Good food, carbs and protein. You know, think about those things right after your ride. So if you haven't 
if you're from out of town or something, or you might want to think about, okay, what can I have that can be good carbs and protein for right after my ride tomorrow, have it in the car ready to go? This beer qualifies a good part. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Absolutely. A good tasting one. <laughs> Hydration, speaking of hydration, electrolyte drink, okay? So again, electrolyte drink, if you've got an electrolyte drink, uh, that would be great to have during your ride. We need electrolytes to help our muscles contract and relax. Uh, we're doing a lot of muscle contraction and relaxation through pedaling a million times uh, throughout the day tomorrow. That is going to be something that you're gonna continue to need after your ride, okay? You'll have used plenty of salt plenty of potassium, all these different electrolytes you're going to need. Okay, so definitely key to have that. Stretching, I really like to stretch. I'm a big person that is into stretching. I really like to do some stretching afterwards, especially if I'm about to get in the car and go somewhere. Okay, so if you guys are out of town, you're about to like get in the car for a couple of hours, the last thing you want to do is just jump straight off your bike, jump in the car, and then you're going to be really stiff. Okay, so do some stretching. I always recommend stretching again before bed. You know. Before you go to bed tomorrow night, hey, you did a big ride yesterday, you did a big ride in the morning, you know, have, have take 30 minutes. Get down, do some stretching, loosen some of those muscles, loosen the hamstring, loosen the gluteals. Um, I don't know if there's post-race massage here or not. I'm not sure if there is. There is. All right. Post-race massage is here. So there will be massage therapists um, after the ride tomorrow to save your legs. You can do it I would totally recommend that that is huge 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 so definitely if you can get that massage I would do it Monday all right you may not want to ride on Monday but you really should okay the legs will feel better okay you'll feel better the legs will feel better you'll feel better on Tuesday and you'll recover a little faster if you ride on Monday okay Ride easy, right? Don't go out and try and kill it on Monday. Ride easy, spin the legs, do it for an hour. That's all you need to do, okay? You're just kind of getting some of those muscles moving a little bit. That's all you're trying to do on Monday. Highly recommended to ride on Monday. Any questions on post-ride recovery? Right. Cool. Awesome. All right, we're going to talk about cornering. So. Uh, one of the things that we do at our cycling camps is we always have a day where we spend um, the morning focusing on cornering and teaching people how to corner. And we've had people come from, uh, I mean, all the way from professional cyclists all the way to relative beginner cyclists to come to our camps. And even the pros, we see a difference in helping them, teaching them how to corner correctly and, and become better at it. Because there are definitely some techniques to being a better uh, person at cornering. So let's kind of talk about the five steps. You're going to be doing lots of turns, lots of downhills down the peaks, lots of turns through the rows, lots of these things you're going to be working on. We've got five different things that we think about. The approach, step two, we're going to regulate our speed, step three, what's our position, and then four, entering the corner, and step five, exiting the corner. Okay, so let's look at step one, the approach. So, for those of you, maybe this will be the first time you've done come down the Peaks of Otter or the or the Thunder or the Thunder Ridge, and so you're kind of you're looking and you're trying, you're always assessing what's coming around that next turn. Is this a hard turn? Is this an easy turn? How sharp is it? How wide is the road? Is there gravel and stuff in the middle of the turn? You know, we've had all this rain, and that sometimes washes gravel right across the center of the road. Okay, so keep your mind, keep your eyes up, looking for that. You're looking in front of you. You're looking way down the road. The best cyclists who are the best uh, folks who go around corners are always looking forward. Okay, you're always looking forward. Your bike will go where you are looking. Okay, so if you're looking right at in front of you and ten feet in front of you, you're not going to see. You're not going to anticipate all these different things. Look around the curve. All those things you're going to want to look for. You're scanning, trying to see what's what's coming up. That's a real key part of those things. It gives you really some idea of, of uh, perspective. So keep that in mind. We're regulating our speed. That's going to be done before the turn. Okay. So just like in the car, 
right? You don't want to hit the brakes in the middle of the turn, right? Just like on the bicycle, you want to slow down, get the, your braking done before you go into the turn, okay? So sometimes that means you over brake, you slow down a little too much, right? Sometimes it means you, you, uh, you, you maybe won't brake quite enough, but you want to get that braking done before you enter the turn, okay? Now, you have to think about what you're going to be doing coming out of the turn, right? Because are you in the right gear? Maybe you need to be in the right gear. So you're kind of thinking about what gear you want to be. It's better off being a little slow than hot into that corner. Okay, it's always better off to be a little slow. So break before the turn, then set up and corner through the turn. Okay, so your breaking point is here. Okay, so this is a big U-turn here. There's not a lot of uh, um, you know U-turns on the on the ride tomorrow, but this is a great slide just to show you kind of where this is. This is the apex, okay, so the center of the turn. So you're coming into this area, braking, and then once the braking's done, now you're cornering, going through, and really, you know, you're looking through and out, right? You're looking down the road. As soon as you get around that turn, your eyes are moving down the road looking where you want to exit out and go through. <coughs> keep the eyes, keep that all the way through the turn. You're turning right, turning left, wherever you're doing. Make sure that that's where you're going. Your bike is going to go where you're looking. If you're looking over here, you're going to go over here. Okay? If you're looking out and down the road, you're going to go out and down the road. Keep that in mind. Positioning. Think about your position. Okay, so it's very likely that you might be with other cyclists tomorrow going down the mountain. So it's important to establish some space between. Okay, you don't need to be going side by side down the mountain at 50 miles an hour tomorrow. Okay, we're not in the Tour de France. It's not. There's nobody going to get any big ten thousand dollars of kisses from girls or anything. Uh, good looking <laughs> men tomorrow. Okay, so um, you don't need to win any downhills. Just keep in mind, establish some space, watch side by side, and in generally, you're trying to um, position yourself <coughs> wide into the turn. Okay, so let's say if you're taking, if you're turning right, right, that means we come over to the left side of the road, around that center line on the yellow soft line, and you kind of sweep in to the right. If you're turning left, you can be on the right side of the road and sweep in on the left side. So you know, use the whole road, or not the whole road, use your whole lane, okay? <laughs> I wish we had a rolling enclosure. Use your whole lane, all right? There's no reason if you've got a right-hand turn to stay on the right side and then cut it really sharp. Get out a little bit, you know? Make sure you're, you know, you got, you're around, you've got people behind you, where, where my, where's my buddies, etc. You're there. I want to get the center of gravity lower. Okay? So if you're going down the mountain on top of the handlebars, your center of gravity is really high. Right? We want to get that center of gravity lower. We want to be down in the drop so we can get more grip on the tires, corner a little better. Okay? So get down the drops, lower your center of gravity. The outside pedal is down. Okay? So we're turning right that my left leg is going to be down, my weight is going to be in my right hand. Okay? So this leg is down. Okay? Outside leg is down. And a lot of people don't put enough weight in that leg, so you'll see people cornering with their leg bent. I want that leg down and I even want your heel extended. Lock your outside leg and put weight into that outside of that bike. That will allow you to carve through the turn just like your skiing for all those folks who ski. Okay, now, if, um, if you've never, you know, you're, you're, you're kind of thinking about this idea of what we call counter steering, okay? So, again, we're weighting the hand and you're pushing the hand forward so the bike corners or leans over, okay? So that's what we want to do. So, if we're turning right, I'm weighting the bicycle with my right hand and the bike will then lean over and corner around that turn to the right. If I'm going to the left, I'm weighting that left hand, I'm locking that right leg. That's called counter steering. Look where you want to go, okay? Try not to break in the turn. 
okay? I'm not afraid to turn. In general, once you practice this a lot, and I know this is something that we're not going to really get to practice or whatever because I was just doing it, but um, if you find yourself drifting out and you're like, I'm going to go across the double yellow line, uh, then most people, their natural reaction is grab brake. Right? Well, if you grab brake, what happens is your bike goes upright and then you go out in the yellow line. Okay? That's definitely going to make you do that. That's your natural reaction. So you want to just put more weight into that hand to make the bike corner a little more. Okay? So I know that's, that's the concept that we have to practice and we do this at our cycling camps all the time. But keep that in mind that it's generally, okay, sometimes you have to grab brake, but probably want to avoid braking once you're in that turn all the way into it, okay? Does that make sense to you guys? It's better when you're on a bike, sorry. It's hard to talk about theory sometimes. All right, let's look at what makes a good corner, what's a good, per a good turn. There's lots of different things that we have going on here. Center of gravity is really low, okay? Look how this guy's arms are low and bent. He's in the drops here. He's got his body down. Look how he's got his knee out right here. This knee is, is helping his weight uh, on the inside of the bike. And look, his outside leg is down and weighted. Okay? So look at this guy in contrast to over here. This guy over here, he's really kind of like off center a little bit. He's heading way over here where this guy is really carving around this turn here. All right? It's a great, great one. His bike angle is greater than his body angle. If we were looking at him from the front, we would see that his bike is leaned over, but his body is relatively upright. Okay, so he's got a, he's keeping his body upright, he's leaning that bike over. Look at his eyes. You can't see it because he's got sunglasses on, but you can just see from the angle of his face, he's looking straight through the photographer where he wants to go. He's letting that happen. Whereas if you see this guy, he's like, whoa, he's looking out way over here. He's going to take, you can just tell by the way he's taking this turn, he's going to go really wide around the outside of this turn here. All right, so this is much, much, a really great example of how to, to be positioned on your bike. Outside leg is down, <coughs> and the leg is locked. Okay? Everybody's like, oh, this is locked. No, it's locked. Knee is locked. Okay? Cyclists are great. You know, we have a really, um, uh, we're, we're, we love the sport, been doing the sport forever, but you know, we're a funny bunch, right? I mean, because where else in life do you do this? I mean, like, we just don't do this, right? It's a completely unnatural position that we're in for a really long period of time. And we never straighten our legs. You know, another reason why I think stretching is so important for us. I can take a picture of uh, 40 people in a room, put 20 people who are cyclists, and I can figure out everyone who's a cyclist because we're all standing with our knees bent, right? Because we can't straighten our legs. We've been doing this for so many years, I can't straighten my legs. You straighten your legs, like, oh, that hurts. Oh, but that's straight. Yes, that's straight, all right? So just keep that in mind. Straighten your leg, outside leg down, and do some stretching. You should be able to touch your toes, okay? And right here, you should be able to touch your toes. Hamstrings, hamstrings long, important. All right, exit. Exit with power. Once you clear the apex, then you can begin pedaling with force, okay? That's where you've thought a little about what gear you want to be in. Oh, shoot, I'm stuck in a too big of a gear. I need to shift to get to an easier gear. Pedal out of the turn, it's faster, and it clears the turn for other riders. You've got people behind you. So remember, I'm going to clear that turn, get out of the way. You've got folks behind me coming. All right, so our five steps again. The approach, okay, heads up, looking. Where am I going? If my eyes are going around the corner, gauging the exit. Are there gravel in the road? What's happening? Is a deer somewhere? Whatever. Step two, regulate your speed. You're going to brake before the turn. Right, make sure you've got that braking done. Step three, low, right? Bike, you're low, you're in the drops, your center of gravity's low, left leg, outside leg, whatever it is, is down and locked. Enter the corner, you're pushing with that inside hand bike wobbles or leans over to the side, goes through, you're looking through the apex. And then exiting, getting a little bit of force, maintaining your line. Alright, so let's talk about maintaining our line just for a second. 
So we have this invisible line that we're trying to ride on when we're on our bicycles. And um, that's a really great concept and a key concept for, our, for all of us to be safe when we're riding in a group. So remember, you're riding on this invisible line and you're trying to hold your line. All right? And another guy's beside you holding their line and you got another person over here holding their line and everybody's kind of holding their own line. So when you, when you have that, you kind of judge your distance. Okay, I'm this far away from the outside of the road. I'm going to maintain this position the whole time. And then if I need to move myself, I need to make sure, okay, hey, I'm moving and I'm moving out of the way. So holding your line is a really critical concept when you rise and group together. Uh, and so you might even hear somebody, hey, buddy, hold your line. You know, you're like wobbling all over the place, okay? Try and keep that place, that's an invisible place on the road that you're holding your line, Whether, wherever that is. When I'm riding by myself, I like to ride right there in the right-hand side of that right-hand car tire track. I'm not riding right over the right line, right? Because I don't want to be out a little bit so the car is forced to go around me. But I will ride right in that line. I hold that line all the time, right? So hold your line, maintain your line when we're just riding. And then we're also going through the turn too, okay? So keep that in mind. Okay, questions on cornering before we got one more thing and then we'll let you guys go. You're ready. Questions on cornering. Okay, cool. Rocking, you guys are going to do great. All right, so what's after Thunder Ridge? What are you going to do next? Um, there's some great other uh, rods coming up. Um, Grand Fondo Asheville, Asheville, North Carolina is the Grand Fondo, the Grand Fondo National Championship Series. That's an excellent one. Um, there's another one here really close in July 9th, Grand Fondo Allegheny, Covington, Clifton and Forge. Uh, there's another one the day after that, Jackson River, that's a really, really pretty one. And then there's another one here, the Boone Grand Fondo in, uh, in August. So there's lots of other events that you can do that are relatively local that are really, really pretty. So I uh, highly recommend these. I'm a big believer in having kind of quarterly goals. And I like to have, uh, I call them my big hairy goals. And uh, if I don't train for them, I'm like, oh, this is going to be really painful. I better train for them. So it keeps me motivated for our uh, big carry goals. Every quarter, I want to have some in the spring, I want to have some in the summer, I want to have some in the fall, I want to have some in the winter. That keeps me motivated, keeps me going. So keep start thinking about those things already, right? What you're doing next. That's important. Okay. A little, uh, just our final advertisement here for the Peaks Coaching Group. If you guys are thinking about, uh, if you have some goals, we'd love to help you. I've got 50 coaches who work for us all over the country, all over the world. Uh, we, we're USA Cycling certified. We're power training certified. If we're using power meter. We have heart rate coaching. We have people who are beginners, people who are all the way. We'll have riders in the Tour de France this year and the Olympics in Rio as well. We have lots of affordable coaching options. And at the same time, we also have uh, camps, so I do camps in the spring and camps in the fall, so lots of fun camps. Uh, we have a great camp in Mallorca, Spain, uh, coming up in, uh, in the spring of next year. This will be our fourth year to go to Mallorca. If you've ever thought about a cycling vacation, I highly recommend Mallorca. It is amazing. It is so cool. Like, when you go there, it is like, um, you're, you're just blown away because it's like, your tribe. It's like thousands of cyclists every day. It's like a grand fun. It's thousands and thousands of cyclists every day. There's more cyclists than there are cars. It's just amazing. It blows you away. The government has paved these roads up these mountains. There's beautiful pavement. There's a coffee shop at the top of every mountain. <laughs> you get up there at the top of the mountain, there's like 50 or 60 or 100 cyclists, and everybody's all like drinking coffee and hanging out. It's totally amazing. And beautiful views of the Mediterranean. It's really, really pretty. Love to have you come to Mallorca with us. Uh, it'll be our fourth year doing it. We've got all the routes dialed. We've got longer routes. We've got a little shorter routes to do. Super fun. We've got a great camp here in the spring in Bedford. Uh, so just 30 minutes away. We do a lot of these same roads. We do a fall camp as well. Okay, so we have a great camp. We also have pre-built training plans. So uh, if you're not looking for a coach, but you know, have a little bit of structure, maybe you've got a little goal, then we've got some great pre-built training plans, really affordable, 100 bucks for eight weeks, 12 weeks of training, gives you, a, you get an email every day, here's what you're supposed to do today, based on your level. So that's a great, great way to get, uh, to get some structure in your life. So 
helps with cycling and get those achieve those quarterly goals. Glad to talk about it. We'll be here tomorrow as well. I've got our booth out front. Uh, Kate, our marketing director, is out there right now. We've got some great, uh, we've got our books, we've got jerseys, all that fun stuff. I'm happy to, to do that and uh, talk about anything you guys like to talk about. And I'll be here tomorrow afterwards too. And I'm riding tomorrow. So maybe just make it a great ride tomorrow. All right. All right.
Thanks, that was great. All right, great. You bet. Appreciate it. Yep, you Have bet. Fun tomorrow. All right, thanks. You too. Thank you.